Dirty Harry here from the Afternoon Show, along with Eric Powers. Unfortunately, Eric is out uh, sick today. He's got that horrible flu that's going around. So I have the luxury and the pleasure to have two beautiful, beautiful women here in the studio. And uh, let me introduce them real quick. we got Maggie Grace and Mia Maestro from the brand new Breaking Dawn Part 2 here in Seattle. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. What, uh, now, obviously, you guys have been up to Seattle yeah, before. Is this your first Seattle. time? It's honestly one of I would move to Seattle any time. Well, I came here on the weekend in the summer. That's like the weekend that tricks you in Seattle. It was like beautiful with the Bainbridge and Vashon and totally sunny. And oh, you experienced that fairy yeah. ride. Right. Uh -huh. oh, that's great. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in Olympia. So um, Olympia? Yeah, winter time, raining every day, and I just love it. So I do you guys here. like the rain? Do you guys like the rain? I do. Well, I, I do since I'm based in L.A. now. So when we get rain in L.A., it sort of seems like dramatic and lovely. You know, it's funny because, you know, my whole family lives on the East Coast in New York and half the people that you, you know, you talk to there say like, well, where's Seattle even on the map? And then, you know, even L.A., like people in L.A. say like, doesn't it rain there 363 days a year? No, it actually doesn't. We just had, I think it was, was it Chris, 92 days, yeah, we had 92 days of straight sunshine up here, which is unheard of for us up here in the Seattle market, so. Is that a good thing? Tell all your friends down there that we want more people moving up to Seattle. So there's no ferries in LA. There's no Bain Bridges in LA. That's so. true. It's really amazing. So let's talk about the brand new movie, Breaking Dawn Part Two. I mean, I think you guys are going to describe it the best. Obviously, I've got uh, my notes here on the movie, but talk about your roles and uh, when this amazing movie comes out, and let's get right into it. The movie comes out uh, November 16th, and it's the last of five, and it's the best one so far. I would agree. I mean, it's, it definitely brings um, you know, brings a lot to a crux, and it's more definitely more action this time around than, than you know, very high stakes battle. And, uh, it really kind of finishes a lot of the themes of the film just in a beautiful way. I, I loved our director Bill Conant. He's such an actress director. He really loved it. He did that dream girl of the King movie. And he's just got a way, a way around with this movie. It's, it's amazing. So um, yeah, I, I was I was kind of blown away when we saw it the other day. I was, it really makes me want to fall in love. Like, I didn't expect it's that to movie. happen. It's quite like, yeah. yeah. And I think it's an honor to you guys that you guys were obviously, you know, chosen and asked to star in the last one as well. I mean, that's a big, you know, big kudos it, to you guys for that. Really it was fun. just lovely to work with Will Um He he's really one of, you know, the, the um, most um, incredible directors out there. So just to be directed by him and uh, just to see him doing this genre of the film, it was actually quite unusual because he does more um, acting than the film, so. Yeah, he has his own take on it. And what was it like filming in Alaska? I mean, I've been up to, a lot, I've actually been up to Fairbanks three times, and that's the only part of Alaska I've been in. Oh, we didn't shoot in Alaska, we yeah. shot in British Columbia. Oh, okay. Or Alaska. We are the Alaskan yeah. vampire cousin in the yeah. mythology of the film. Okay. We shot in Squamish, which was, I loved it. Yeah. yeah. You know? I think we were the only two people in the cast that were like, Squamish! Yeah. Forever! Because we were always cross-country skiing, and it's, it's really great. It's, it's yeah, and not when we were in Vancouver, actually, yeah. I came to Seattle for a week and a half just because I had a week and a half off, and I just came here just to chill. It's kind of and awesome. I've always wanted to know, like, from an actor's standpoint, like, I, I don't know how you guys do it, but the memorization, to memorize these lines, I mean, is it like, is it multiple takes for different scenes, or like, I, I don't know, I mean, I would think There's that would be... There's not a lot to memorize in this <laughs> one. <laughs> But in general, like, in general, some scripts, yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of, like, studying where you have to, like, you know, rehearse I, I and... I've never had a problem with it, but I don't, I'm about to start Broadway for the first time, so that's another, another, another type of, you know, if you if you forget something, you're kind of on your own. <laughs> they don't do that. They won't, like, stop the reel and redo it? or that's Oh, no, I'm yeah. saying uh, I'm doing a play for the first time. No, so I get that, but I'm saying that uh, for, like, you know... When yes, but normally when you get to set, all the actors are super prepared, um, so you don't have, you know, you don't normally have trouble with that. I actually did a film this year uh, with um, Neil Abute. It's a film written by Neil Abute, and it's one of his plays, Some Girls. And that was quite challenging, because we had to do a whole play, or a whole act of a play, uh, where my character um, had just one scene with one other person, Adam Brody, a great actor. Um, and it was like 30 pages of dialogue, so that was pretty challenging. We had to shoot that in three, four days. So but I was which, like is, one which would be intense. It was super intense, and I had to, I had to prepare a lot for it because I knew I had.
hard to get. It was, it's an independent film, and um, we just had those days to shoot it, so I had to be you know, totally ready and know my dialogue, dialogue from A to Z from the first moment. So, yeah. I remember when she was running for that, I was like, this yeah. is an unusual situation. Right? <laughs> Do you want to go for dinner? I said, I need to go and learn my life. <laughs> now, are you guys friends, like off, off camera? Off yeah, actually, yeah. We are, yeah. So you guys like hang out. What do you guys do like on your off time? Do you guys go out to like parties or clubs? A lot. We're not really clubs, but we're more like the dinner, you know, tea type. Are you guys into fashion? Do you guys like fashion? Um, no. I think moving to New York, I'm gonna have to sort of learn my way around that. I'm more. I love fashion. I mean, I've been. I think I love to wear. You know, I wear a lot of vintage. I think it's the best thing for the environment as well. Just you know, just yeah. If you're moving to New York, you got to know the name Zara. They're all over New York City. It's <laughs> okay. Unbelievable. I love that you're educating me on. Yes, I love, I love Zara. Fashion. Zara's straight out of Italy, and it's like, <laughs> like there's H and M, and then there's Zara. So it's like that, that's the Are way. Are you setting me up here? No, I'm just, I'm telling you that I, I'm from New York, and my whole family lives in New York, and mm -hmm. my first day every How trip. How are they this week? My God. Thank you for asking. Um, you know, thank God they uh, live on the Upper East Side of New York City, mm -hmm. where it wasn't really hit too hard. The people that really saw the, the brunt of it were people yeah. in you know, well, Queens really and Brooklyn. it's strange, isn't it? Because the, the line on, on Manhattan seems to be 34th, and you know, my friends that live there were joking that it's usually like the cool kids who live below 34th, and sort of the, right. the families, right. and, you know, tend to live above, and it, it's like the, the haves have become the have-nots. They're the ones without power right. being hit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that in terms of people getting their power restored, I mean, they've been, you know, really working on that. But I don't know how many photos you saw from the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did you guys see that photo of LaGuardia That's Airport? Crazy. It's crazy. I mean, you crazy. couldn't even it's see it. You could barely see the jet waves. Yeah, I mean, everything my was brother's like, out there. I've been worried sick. I hope everyone's okay. Like, you FaceTime me or else. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I can't wait to get back, and I'm going back for Thanksgiving week, and I can't wait to see uh, just the, the destruction. You just, I don't think the news really no. does a good job. And I think you know, New really York being such an emotional right. place for everyone in America. Right. What's next on the plate for you guys, obviously, after Breaking Dawn Part 2? What other uh, projects do you guys well, Obviously, you said the Broadway. Yeah, I'm doing a Broadway play. It's called Picnic. Um, previews in December. I'm very excited about it. It's a revival of the 50s piece. But, you know, really, really excited about that. And then I'm doing a show called California for Showtime, so that was a, a departure for me, and a lot of fun, and we're developing another show there, so. so. that mean you're going to have to, like, partially locate to New York, or? Um, well, for the, the play, yeah. Yeah. But the Californication is sort of a love letter to, uh, to L.A. Great. So that's nice. Great. How about you, man? I have an EP coming out in two weeks. It's called The White Sailor, and um, it has three beautiful songs, one of them. Um, it's called Your Vida, and it was past year in the Breaking Down. working on the post-production of the video for The White Sailor. It's a video that we did with Guillermo Navarro, the DP from Breaking Down. And it's really beautiful. It's like an art um, film. I don't so even know how to describe it. It's really, it's it's really amazing. unique. Amazing. So yeah. we're doing color correction now and putting it together. It's going to come out on iTunes in two weeks. And then I have the new Lucky film, Some Girls, written by me. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'd like to ask, in terms of like, you know, the singing, with obviously them, them be so connected, is there one that you want to maybe branch off and focus on a little bit more, or do you want to keep them both on the same, on the same kind of playing field? I really love both. Um, to me, singing and acting, it's, it's, you know, it's different, but it's, in, it, they have the same heart, it's storytelling. So, um, what I love about singing is just, uh, um, I get to play live a lot more, and I haven't been doing theater enough, even though um, I used to do a lot of theater in Argentina. But uh, um, singing just gives me the possibility of connecting with an audience and just having, you know, doing a tour, having like two or three shows a week. But I also love acting and I love working with directors, so um, it would be really hard for me to choose one. Yeah, no, I guess yeah. because she doesn't have to. Yeah, so right. breaking down soundtracks. So right, mm -hmm. great. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Must, you know, it must be so cool to like just drive around in different cities and be able to hear that, like on you know radio stations yeah, or on TV. Also, uh, the soundtrack um, um, of 
I like you know is, a, is a curated by Alex Alex Pastala. She's an incredible music supervisor. So um, the the range of artists that have been in Twilight soundtrack is pretty amazing. Yeah, she's she broken some really yeah. cool. Even before I became a part of the franchise, I remember I got some chords. Yeah. <laughs>